I am Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susan. And we're paranormal specialists who live in the most haunted city on earth, Savannah, Georgia. Every day is Halloween in our line of work, so join us as we spin true tales of haunts, murders, and disturbing Savannah history. I'm Madison. I'm Chris. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the most haunted city <laughs> on earth. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of the most haunted city on earth. My name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. And I'm JT Timmons. And today we are going to be talking about the very haunted Moon River Brewing Company. Oh boy. Everybody's favorite place to go to to get a pint and sit with some ghosts. You yes. Know? This has been a very like uh, a highly requested episode. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's everybody's, like, question, you know, when they come to Savannah, they're like, what is this Moon River place I keep seeing on the internet? Because they've done a great job of advertising themselves as haunted. Oh, well, and they don't necessarily even have to because there are so many stories and and experiences and people uh, promoting it as well. You know, I think Mm -hmm. any any investigative uh, television show that... The Ghost Hunters, the Ghost Adventurers, the Ghost Brothers, any of them have been to Moon River. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, before we get started, I want to thank uh, our newest patrons or pair junkies. Um, that always happens because I'm looking at Patreon. <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> but uh, Emily V, Natalie Nicole, Megan Baker, and Ashley Blackman, thank you so much for your support. Seriously, I mean, it, it means the world. And welcome to the Pair Junkie family. Yep. It helps us out a lot when you all, uh, y'all become uh, pair of junkies because it means that we can keep doing this for even longer. Absolutely. Um, so, yes. If it you is wa- our, it, it's our main source of funding. Yes. It is our main definitely. source of funding at this point um, just to keep us going and, you know, pay for gas to get to different places, uh, you know, haunted locations. It's It really is awesome. Mm-hmm. So. Thank you. Absolutely. And if you want to become a pair of junkie, you can find us on Patreon under the Savannah Underground. They get all sorts of fun things. They yes. get exclusive content. They get um, a secret merch shop. They get uh, discounts on our merch. They get, you know, like uh, constant communication with us. We get, <laughs> we're, we're talking to them all the time via messaging and whatnot. So if that's something you're interested, definitely go ahead and find us over there. Um, but yes, so Chris, do you want to kind of like give a brief over arc of like the history of Moon River and then we can sure, get into absolutely. the hauntings? So Moon River uh, is right on Bay Street, right down in the very heart of downtown Savannah. You have, uh, you're just one block from River Street. It's an amazingly large and lavish building. It was originally built as a hotel, the City Hotel in 1820. And it was the hotel. It was the place to be. And it was full of spectacle and wonder. And they uh, they brought lions into the lobby. They, they really did. And so a lot of very wealthy people from all over the country, when they came to Savannah, that was the place to stay. And it became this like, you know, perfect destination spot. And in its history, we we've we've traced and followed the fact that it, it has uh, it has gone through long periods of just not being uh, inhabited. You know, a, a store might get in there, but not last very long. Uh, if you go there now, the upper levels are completely unrenovated. the The main floor, which is a restaurant, Moon River, River Brewery, a uh, restaurant and brewery. Uh, and the basement have been refinished, so they use a lot, utilize it as that restaurant. But the upper floors, completely just... I noticed that when I went. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and surprisingly, I had, I've been in the building before it was Moon River. Because while it was doing its renovations, there were an uncanny amount of accidents of people uh, claiming that there was something going on, something wrong with the place. Really? And the cease on the... Uh, renovations as as expressed to me by construction workers was they couldn't hire people to continue the work and they're like you know many people and it, and it's kind of a a running 
uh, joke in Savannah, but it has it rings true that there's a there's a blacklist of buildings that that local construction workers won't work on. You know that that there are buildings that local constructions like look that that place is haunted. They they literally will not. Uh, do any renovations on certain buildings. So we oftentimes will see companies from out of Savannah mm-hmm. show up to work on these buildings. Most famously uh, of the last you know, 15 years is um, 12 West Oglethorpe, mm-hmm. Which, mm-hmm. which went through many hands and many different companies. It, it, even a Starbucks tried to renovate it and decided no. Oh my god! You know, they, and I was like, if you're if you're diverting a Starbucks, yeah. something's going on. Husk is there, now, and Husk right? is there yeah. now, which is a South Carolina Charleston business, and they brought you sure. know uh, construction companies in and 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 groups in, and and it is that's a that's an, another story for another day. But um, so uh, Moon River. Before it was Moon River was was another bar pub kind of thing. People start up, but it kind of went under and and Moon River came in and and took over. But it was fascinating because in the basement, there was this door in the basement. And it was like, uh, it looked like it was from a ship. Like one of those uh, doors, that that big metal door with a little porthole in it. And and just standing next to it, you're like, that doesn't feel right you know it doesn't feel right to be next to this door i don't know what it is and so when we opened the door it you know dragged along the uneven uh floor you're you're opening it and inside the ground was still dirt oh wow and it was like what is happening why is this room like this why is this room because again the basement and the first floor are finished but at the time and this was in the 90s the floor of that room was unfinished and it was the source of so much angst um and again if you go back and you watch any of the um any of the ghost shows their big issues were in that basement that basement they were in it's- that basement and that basement and is specifically the room i'm speaking of that area is where a lot of activity happens a lot of people lose their senses in there i myself had i blacked out in that room and when i came to i was being kind of dragged out of the room uh by hysterical people and i and it's just one of those things where it, it the the whole atmosphere of that area is very big but i i spoke to a historian who is who was hot on the trail of trying to figure out what it was about the city hotel and why this was because the ghost story that is most frequently um, linked to the ho- uh, to Moon River is the murder of Stark, a man named Stark, a gambler, mm-hmm. uh, by a man named Minus, which I always loved. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Doctor Minus. That it was really that was his name. Doctor Minus shows up. Um, he was supposed to have a duel with Stark because Stark was snarky, of course. Um, but Stark didn't show up, so he goes to the hotel and shoot Stark dead. Oh my God. It's just a straight up murder. And so a lot of people are like, that's the ghost of, you know, but none of the stories match as bad that. Yeah. None of the story because people are getting scratched and pushed and people are seeing things and there are masses of ghosts, groups. And, and, and so there's a lot of that's like, insane. well, that doesn't make, the Stark story is good and a lot of people say they see Stark standing in, you know, on the staircase, you know, and it's like, okay, I can, I can get behind that, but what is, what is the deal with this darkness? Yeah, How are the upper floors so inaccessible? And so I was talking to this historian about it, and he says, well, what I want you to imagine is that uh-huh. you're in the South in a lavish, rich hotel, and you, you show up, and you're a rich Southerner. You're a rich Southern plantation owner. You're a rich Southern you know, businessman, and you show up maybe with your family to stay in this hotel. Do you think that they traveled alone or do you think that they had people to carry their bags do you think they had people to you know to tend to them and yeah. I, was, I was like so you're saying they, they traveled with slaves he's like yes it was not uncommon to have a slave to carry your things and to, mm-hmm. to do these things but slaves were not allowed anywhere above the lobby floor oh. so they would you know, ha- you know they couldn't stay there they couldn't sleep there it's like oh that's a good point they're not going to let a slave sleep in the hotel room yeah 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 and he's like, you're right. Well, you know, and, he, and he's telling me that he has 
documentation of a vault. Oh. A vault where you would keep your valuables. No. Yes. They would take the slaves down <gasps> and put them and chain them in the basement, in the vault. Oh, that's a lot of negative energy. Mm-hmm. Not just that. In Savannah, in the dead of summer, without proper mm. care or water or maintenance or you know anything that you could imagine human decency would allow, they would die. Mm. And if you had a slave die in this vault with an earthen floor... It's possible that they just buried them on the spot. Oh, my they goodness. just dug straight into the ground and put the bodies in. And this was all supposition. Uh, he did have one letter that was a complaint from a man who was like, "My slave died in your in your care, you know, in your care." Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and he was trying to get the a monetary sum <clears throat> equal to his slave from this hotel. And I was just like, this is insane. He's like, yeah, well, you know, most people wouldn't even think to be outraged in this because it's not abnormal. When you think about the rigors of life in the South and how poorly these people were treated and how much dehydration must have occurred and how much malnutrition must have occurred, you know, there's so many uh, ways for people to just die. And, and, And then I'm like, well, that's really weird because while the... While the basement is like, in many people's beliefs, sort of a nexus of of the the hauntings, the upper floors are extremely haunted and and unfinished. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. Well, imagine you're a spirit in a building where you weren't allowed to go to the second and third floors. Mm-hmm. Imagine how much you wouldn't want anyone to have yeah. the right to be up there. Oh. How much you would try to force anything to keep those rooms inaccessible because they were inaccessible to you, you know, okay. as a point of just pure yeah. aggression. Yeah. I was like, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Does. Know, it, does. It, it, it fits so many narratives that I've heard. And, um, and, and again, there's a lot of stories that come out about Moon River, but when you start listening to experiences, you have a hard time reconciling because history is a tricky beast. Um, especially history that people don't like talking about. Oh, yeah. And so the kinds of things that would happen, especially slave-related, have been glossed over, washed over, and then turned retrospectively into either ghost stories or folklore or or things of that Mm -hmm. nature. Okay, so I have lots of questions. Chris, I'd like to just say you're a phenomenal storyteller. I mean, one of the best best I've ever met because, like, I could visualize everything. That was crazy. Um, I feel like I just watched a movie. Um, my first question, do you think the basement, just for people who don't know, the basement is an event space now. Um, do you think that a lot of the, I don't think that it's necessarily evil, like any scratching, pushing, blacking out. I think that potentially there was so much suffering down there that people are part partying drinking there's revelry there's fun people are smiling oftentimes they are white like i wonder if if a lot of that is like almost disrespectful to the entities I would, am i wrong I would in imagine thinking that, that is that I is a totally pretty strong yeah absolutely that that is absolutely a very strong notion um and to be sure we coming coming at it you have the sense that it's evil uh, because a lot of it is dark, a lot of it is mm-hmm. oppressive, a lot of it, um, and and the blacking out. Like um, one of the most significant experiences I've had, and I've spent a lot of time in the Moon River Brewery. I've done mm-hmm. overnight investigations. I've had I used to do ghost tours that allowed us access to the building. I you know I've had a lot of time in there, and and during one of my ghost tours, um, and and this wasn't in the basement. This was actually upstairs. Um, if you watch that Ghost Brothers episode that I'm in, they transposed it to downstairs, but it, it happened upstairs. The, the event happened upstairs. Um, we were, it, it, I was telling a story and uh, one of the, uh, my, one of my guests, uh, a man, it, it was a married couple, and this man, he just shouts very loudly, belay the mass! And that's what he says. He shouts it very loudly and his wife runs behind me and like stands behind me. And I, I was like, what's wrong? And she was like, that is not my husband's voice. 
And so we're, we're standing there <laughs> looking at him, and he is standing because there's no lights up there. We're only getting the light through the window. He's standing where we can't really see him. He's like in the shadows and he's just standing there kind of like breathing heavy and we're all just like looking at him and then he like sits down on a chair and he proceeds to vomit and we hear it. We're just like that horrible retching sound and we actually hear the splat on the ground like, you know, he is he is vomiting. So after that, he's very kind of docilely, almost drunk and, and I'm like, what's wrong? And, and she's like, he didn't really have a drink. You know, we have maybe something at dinner, but I don't know. So we, 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 we go to pick him up and we're coming up and I'm going to find somebody to clean up, you know, to get like a mop or something. But as I'm walking towards him, there is no sign of anything on the floor. No vomit. What? Nothing. What? And we're just looking at it and we're like, okay, let's, let's get him out. So we, we're literally carrying him out. I've got one arm, somebody else has the other, and we're walking down the stairs. We walk outside the building, and the second we step outside the building, he starts talking, like, what, what's, what's happening? What's going on? And we're like, do you remember saying belay the mass? He's like, I don't know what's going on. We, I, 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 we were just up there. And that was another thing. The, the phrase, belay the mass, I do not know what it means. Yeah. It sounds almost nautical to me. It sounds like yeah, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it might yeah. be like a, 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 something that you would say on a ship. Um, like and master. I know that... <clears throat> and yeah, I, I, mast? I, right, yeah. the mast. But the other one was, I know that belay. that belay means to stop, mm. like belay that order, oh. you know, cease the order. And then I was like, belay the mass. Maybe it meant like stop the religious service, mm. stop the, you know, mass, mm -hmm. you know, a mass being a religious service. So I, I, I've never been able to find out. Um, I've done a lot of research on that phrase, but the phrase itself, and I was like, is it belay the mast, which would be like maybe holding the ropes yeah. mm -hmm. on the mast because um, when to you're- tie down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, when, you're, when you're at, um, when you're rappelling, mm -hmm. they often, you know, on, on belay, they're, you're asking for somebody to be on the rope. Yeah. How but, long ago was this? So that was- Probably around 2012. Okay. Ish. But it was so fascinating because as we got away, he got more and more of his senses and he was absolutely determined that nothing happened. You know, he had no concept of it and he didn't know why he had blacked out. He didn't understand what was going on. And he was in the army. He was like a lieutenant or something. So he was a very straight laced human being. Wow. So he was not, you know, uh, there was no sensationalism to it. You know, sometimes you, 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 you encounter people and they are, they lean into it so heavily that you're like, okay, you were, you were open to it and, or you, you know, you're, you're allowing yourself to be swept away by it. But that was none of that from him, you know, wow. he, and he just, you know, uh, we, we stopped the tour right there, yeah. you know, and, and that was the interesting thing was, uh, it, it wasn't necessarily my last stop. It was close to my last stop. But everybody was very satisfied with their experience. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm freaking sure. Everybody on that tour was like, here's a tip and I'm leaving. Yes. <laughs> yeah, or here's a tip and I'm there. going back in. You know? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, my next question, Madison, do you have anything to say? Uh, yes, okay. actually. Um, right. no, yeah. you, you go, you go, because I've talked, I've talked too much. Yeah, you it's go. okay. The, um, so with Moon River, I find it really interesting just how vast the experiences are because I've heard of like, I've heard you tell that story before. Um, but then also just like, sometimes it is people are getting scratched. Sometimes people are getting bruised, but I have an interesting story about um, down in the basement when JT was filming his uh, thesis film. Yes. Um, because so JT and I, uh, well, I produced his thesis film, um, so one of the locations I got, because I don't know if y'all know this, but it's very hard to find a basement location oh, yes. in the city of Savannah. And the basement of Moon River is supposedly a good and accurate look at what the tunnel system would mm -hmm. be like, because mm -hmm. you could actually, if you go down into the basement, you will actually see an area that is a door that goes into the street. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we were we were looking for a basement location, and the only place I could really find that would let us film was um, Moon River. And so the scene, it was a really short, like, small scene. It was um, supposed to be uh, basically this grandmother. Yeah, we didn't know. When you when you say this, we didn't know anything. We didn't you know anything us. that yeah. you just said. Then that's why it really came up in my mind. That's it's why like, it came uh, in my mind. Yep. All right, so now. So yeah. basically, uh, the scene was supposed to be, uh, because the concept of the film was that it was like this generational 
parasitic demon that gets passed on through the women in the family and things like that. Um, and so it was supposed to be Mimi, the grandma, um, torturing somebody in her basement. And so we had our friend Tanner chained up to the wall in the basement of Moon River. <laughs> I kid you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I oh my god. <laughs> yeah, when you mess up, <laughs> oh, you messed up so we hard on know. accident. We, we had no know. idea. Um, oh my god. And so we had Tanner chained up to the wall. Um, so it's basically for those of you who have been in the basement of Moon River, and Chris, you'll know where this is. But um, when you come down the stairs, and it's on the right hand side where they keep all of the beer barrels and stuff like that. Uh, we had him chained up to that wall, and he had center carved in his chest. And Tanner had so many weird experiences while he was down there. He's like, oh, I feel like someone's touching me. Like, why is, like, what's going mm -hmm. on, you know? And we're like, oh, it's probably just, like, the draft or whatever. It's an old building, yada, yada, yada. But mm -hmm. the weirdest part, though, is that we were filming on an Ari Alexa. Or was we? It was an Ari Alexa. Yeah, it was an Ari Alexa, which is, like, high-end it's the best top, of, it's top the best of the line camera. camera. It's the best camera you can get. Nothing should go wrong with this camera. This is what Hollywood uses. And half of the, or like all of the footage that we got practically yeah. corrupted. And we couldn't retrieve it because... Which, we had to do a reshoot. Yeah, we had to do a reshoot because of the fact that we didn't get any of the footage from down in that basement. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised, actually. It was, I remember it was corrupted in a very weird way. Um, we, were, we were trying to access it, and though we could see frames, um, it was like, like digitally destroyed, where, where the frames, where we saw the footage... We saw the clips um, in columns, and when we transferred them over, because uh, we had DIT there, um, and, uh, and so we transferred them over to my laptop, and we just opened them up, and at the bottom half, it was purple and pink, just absolutely just shredded like the bottom half of the frame crazy yeah it's really weird and that we had to really reshoot weird. everything because that was that was printed into the digital file yeah and so the, the endless stories about electronics not working about cameras shutting off about batteries being drained i mean that is par for the course but but <laughs> that, that, that would change the, somebody up yeah thank we god he was white as snow because like i really i couldn't imagine what if it if it had been any other ethnicity if that would have you gone run into a lot of way aggression. worse um because i remember after we filmed it i told somebody we filmed down in that basement it was like a tour guide friend of mine and they were like, uh, you, you did what? And I was like, oh, yeah, we had them chained out to the wall, whatever. Um, and this was before I was a tour guide here in Savannah. And so um, they had just mentioned that people were chained up down in that basement. Mm -hmm. um, they had only mentioned that. They didn't say, like, well, to it, the extent of right. what it was. Well, and that was the, the fascinating thing was because it, it, it did survive. People did talk yeah. about it. But w having somebody, like, really do a deep dive into – why would anybody tell that story? And mm -hmm. why would anybody be chained in that basement? Because the going story was that it was a oh, part of the slave market or the slave trade and, sure. and, and the slaves were being held there while waiting for auction or things like that. So, but, but that didn't fit the narrative of the building, yeah. which was this lavish hotel. Um, yeah, it's bizarre. My, my, the very first experience I had in the building, I got to do a late night uh, ghost hunt there. And the, the room, so the room that where you, you change Tanner up, right next to it is where the vault is. It's it's literally oh, the, the open area right there. Yeah, that that's, that's what right. I thought. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and the door is right there on the right. Mm -hmm. um, I think they replaced it with like a, a more regular looking door. But um, yeah. but when I was there, it almost looked like a submarine door. Yeah. Um. But uh, for a long time, that's where they had a pool table. Oh. And so there's a pool table there. And along the wall are the places where you put pull cues, but it wasn't the kind that you stick and, and has the prongs that hold the, it in place. It was the kind that had two rows of, of holes, and you would have to, like, yes. slide the pull stick through the hole and then back down. So the, the walls were lined with pull sticks. And we were doing our investigation, and we were uh, actually in the, uh, the, the banquet area mm -hmm. that, that is now. So we're two rooms away, sitting hanging out, uh, you'll hear me say this a lot, ghost hunts are boring. Like, there's a lot of downtime, a lot of just sitting around. So we're, we're, we're just chatting uh, down there, and we hear just this 
terrible noise, this like, you know, explosion of sound. And it was like very alarming, very loud. And it was coming from the pool area. And we're like, oh my God, you know, what was that? So, you know, get your flashlights, get everything. (laughs) And we come running in to the pool area. All the pool cues were on the floor. All the sticks. No way. Yeah, all the sticks. As if they had just fallen out of the racks. But, like I said, it was impossible to pull pull it out. And it was like 20 sticks. So even if somebody had run in to... To do it, yeah. How did they get all of them out? Yeah. And and we were just standing there looking at it, and it was it was definitely one of those moments where we felt so uneasy mm-hmm. uh, about what was happening. And again, this was the '90s, so uh, it's not like we had a lot of equipment. It, it's yeah. not like we had you know it, the trying to get a night vision camera in the '90s. You know, trying to yeah. get you know these kinds of things. It was beyond our our. Uh, expense report we were really just down there with flashlights and 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 still photography sure and it was i remember that we 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 put all the cues back and left it was like we're not staying you know this is not and you know i have a lot of ghost hunt stories where we just leave and people get very (laughs) they get very mad they're like why did you stay why don't you oh you found something around i was like yeah but there's a there's a a degree of preservation that comes up because you're like i don't we're not we're not prepared for something of this nature sure you know i'd love to see something i'd love to catch something i'd love to be witness to something but something inside me is saying get out and uh, i i am a big proponent of running like if something scary happens, I am I'm a big proponent of saying you know get out, you know, <laughs> run, just right. yeah. yeah, get out of there. So w- one of my questions um, was, do they still have the door? I have not seen that door. Be- uh, they don't really let people over the, in that it's area. It's very anymore. reminiscent. It's very reminiscent of the table. Oh yeah, in Sorrel Weed in House. The Sorrel yeah. Weed House makes people sick. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I haven't even thought about that. Yeah. Because it's part of the shit. But I do know that they, they did finally, like, if you open that door, because I think it's storage now. Yeah. If it's, you open the door, um, they put, like, patio tiling. Like, it, it's, it's very do-it-yourself, just cover the dirt. Sure. So it's no longer a dirt floor. It, it, it's like, um, it's not like the rest of the floor either. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like you open wow. it and you're like, oh, somebody came in and covered up. The, the the dirt sure yeah yeah i wonder if um the lizzie borden film that was filmed here they mm. filmed in the basement mm-hmm. of moon river i would love to see if there's any stories from that shoot because they were Chloe doing- Savigny, if you want to give us a call I'll- right <laughs> i know no i mean like if there's like any articles or anything about that because like that I find it interesting, you know, if maybe they had any kind of filming like issues or it's, if they had any experience. It's an interesting thing because when you start dealing with things like that, the question is how many people were in the area? Because the more people in the area, the more uh, spread out that spiritual energy becomes. It's, it's harder to affect a large scale thing. Like if you have a small crew and a small, you know, just a handful of people, yeah. the ability to affect is stronger, but the more people there, and I always liken it to the fact that we are spiritual beings too. You know, we are spirits. Uh, and when we're, we're more occupying a space, we're vying for this psychic energy. We're vying for it. And the more people that are awake and active, the less that a spirit has the ability to penetrate what is happening. So I wonder, you know, mm-hmm. if you have a large group of people in a space, and they all experience something that I think you're dealing with a very powerful entity. Absolutely. Because it is, it, is, it is superseding all of that activity, all that mental activity that is going on. It is superseding the energy that it takes to accommodate us as human beings, as living human beings. So, um, so yeah, it, it, I think there's a, a double uh, issue. One being, yeah, they're in the space and they're probably, you know, kicking up, you know, spiritual dust. Yeah. But if it's a lot of people... True. It, it, it's very likely the ghosts mm-hmm. were like, poke, 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 poke. And it was and, just going and over it was, their yeah, heads. Uh, it was not registering. That's, um, yeah, that, that is a good point. Because it's, you know, if you've ever been on a film set, it's very overwhelming. But, um, yeah, I do recommend if y'all ever do come to Savannah, try to see if there's an event going on mm-hmm. in Moon River's basement. They, they, they host ghost they, hunts all the time. They host oh, yeah. haunted things all the time. And 
they have a pretty decent meal, you know, if they you want to just go and eat. And, and lots of people have stories of while they're eating, mm-hmm. having yeah. their, their, their fork slide off the table or watch their drink like slowly tip and fall or, or go off the table. And I'm like, maybe it's uneven floors or maybe there's a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very unnerving building to be in though. Like you walk in and you're just kind of like, you know, it's oh. like kind of gives you a little chill down your Literally spine. The last time I went there, it was a going away party for a friend. We were there and we were in the back uh, and, you know, having a great time at a long table and a giant bat came flying in. A giant bat. A bat, oh but God. it was a giant bat just started. It came in, I think from the front door. And came flying in. Off of Bay Street? Off of Bay Street. What's a, a bat doing on Bay bat. Street? <laughs> and we were just like, what is it? It was like, it's a bat. And it was like, that's not a bat. And so the argument ensued. And it, no, it was a bat. It was a huge bat. And so like staff members were like trying to hit it with a broom and try to get outside. So there's like big <laughs> Dang it, Moon exit River. doors on the back and we're opening. It. And I'm like, this, this is Moon River right here in a Absolutely. nutshell. <laughs> this giant bat flapping around. I'm like, is it a vampire? Are we, are we dealing with vampires now? Yeah, honestly, wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> you know, it's, it's about time Savannah gets a vampire story. You know, there's a couple of good vampire stories in Savannah. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's for another day, but yes. I do have a, a couple of good vampire stories uh, yeah, in that's, Savannah. That's, we can do that um, episode soon yeah. if you have a Savannah vampire story. Savannah vampire story. The uh, Savannah and, vamps. And I don't know, Savannah, it, it might be just Savannah vampire wannabe stories, mm-hmm. but they're very eerie. There's yeah. just a couple of eerie stories in Savannah. I swear, every time I hear like a city, it's like, oh, we have vampires. Like I went to Salem a couple years ago and I took a ghost tour there and the person like had brought up like you know like oh we have vampires and he's like telling all this stuff and he's like but it's a fetish and I was like that's not haunted that's That's not what I came here for it's it's (laughs) a a lifestyle (laughs) he literally was like yeah it's like a thing you know like you you find your your donor or things like that and I was like so what made you think like you, I'm like that doesn't consult that doesn't connect for me vampires in Salem Savannah so in the 90s had a vampire epidemic we had an really? issue with vampires not real vampires just people who dress oh, like vampires and act okay. like vampires and languished around in Johnson Square what? and it was it was literally like oh my god vampires and and you'd walk through Johnson Square in the nineties and you'd see them and you'd be like, Ugh, vampires. Why are we a country you know, Halloween town, it's bro? So, we are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so bizarre. Well, and it was because of uh, there was a role playing game that was very uh, you know um, very popular then called Masquerade, and these were all you know sort of college aged kids who who really like went all in on this thing uh, the vampire masquerade thing and i'll never forget because it, it it stopped super abruptly like one day no vampires and i remember distinctly saying to another person i kind of miss the vampires you know like, yeah. like having that conversation do you remember when there were vampires what, what whatever happened to the vampires but yeah they have a ball oh, at uh, ghost coast now they do every, have a ball at ghost coast. they do it That's every right. year the vampire ball. yeah it's ghost coast still a thing it's, you, no, no, just it's recently cool. kind of I mean, recently. yeah no. Yeah, every, I mean, I think they still make. Uh, they're still distilling, they still make, distilling but, yeah. but, they're but not, the bar they're closed. Not, yeah, yeah the construction there, yeah. killed them. So going back to good old Moon River, because you know we 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 know how to we know how to go Tangent. all over the place. Yeah, we, and we that's fine. I, I feel yeah. like our, our I feel like our listeners are about that. But um, going back to it, uh, how old is that building? That's like, so 1820 yeah. was its construction, was, its, was that, its opening. So yeah. in, did you in, mention that beforehand? I feel yes. like, okay, mm-hmm. that's what I thought. But in its, uh, yeah, in, in, in the way it looks right now, it was the 1820 building. So yellow and fever. It, uh, so people will All want- All sorts of things. Right. Yeah. Well, people will want to suggest that uh, Moon River was you know, a hospital or, or you know, a place like that. That's not true. <laughs> that, okay. uh, it, it was not a yellow fever asylum or, or, or anything of that nature, at least not to our knowledge. Sure. Um, that, because it, it ran as a, as a hotel until the Civil War ended. So it was from 1820 to the 1860s, okay. it was the city hotel. And some people are like, well, was it a makeshift hospital during the Civil War? There's several reports that suggest that it might have been, but we don't have anything definitive because we had the Marshall House. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and the Marshall House really overshadowed it. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if it was, it was not 
the kind of hospital it would have been, uh, and it, it's weird to say, but it, it's possible that they they serviced Confederates at different locations. Because when the Union came in, the Confederates were like triaged, meaning they were set out of buildings and they would be like under tents and there would be, you know, they would not have hospital rooms. You know, um, the, the famous story was the Candler Hospital uh, mm-hmm. was, was a place where they were like, you know, the Union soldiers were, were almost like prisoners. Well, they were prisoners. They were almost like prisoners, but there weren't many. That's another thing about Savannah. Savannah did not see a lot of action. Yeah. You know, that concept. And so when we're talking about the hospitals during the Civil War, these are people who are riding in on carts from a, from a distance, you know, or, or they, were, they were injured along the way to Savannah. Sure. Savannah was not a site of battle mm-hmm. during yeah. the Civil War. Um, certainly not like the Revolutionary War. So yes, that's those are excellent questions. It, it it was a large building and facility during you know some of the 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 worst yellow fever, yellow fever yeah. <laughs> incidences. Eighteen twenty was kind of just a rough year for Savannah in general. <laughs> uh, so fire, right? Well, yeah. So okay. you had the Great Fire of Savannah, um, which like took out like half the city. It was like this ravenous fire that they like literally had to call upon like citizens to help Mm -hmm. put out the flames and stuff like that. And then after that, you had this massive storm come in and it was just like a, like tumultuous. It was, it was really awful because it was a weird, it was a weird high at the beginning of the year because, you know, the port industry was booming. They're really starting to get into the groove of things. And then they just kept getting hammered by natural forces, which is just bizarre in general. Uh, but it all seemed to lead to each other because the fire led to buildings being derelict. Mm-hmm. Then the rain came in and flooded all those derelict buildings. And then that bred mosquitoes and then that bred yellow fever. And then it yeah. just kind of it was a cycle of destruction. It was. It yeah. was rough <laughs> to be in Savannah in 1820. Mm. And so that's kind of why that year sticks out a lot when mm-hmm. we talk about Savannah, because it's like, it seems like everything that could have gone wrong went wrong that year. And those walls down in the basement, those are like original walls. It those, looks like brick? it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I'm trying to think if, if there was any replacements during the I, and I don't think so. It might have been patched up at I was times. Say, but it seems like some of the middling pillars might be um, just well done reconstruction. Okay, but the the walls themselves, especially like looking like when you're in the basement, you first come down the stairs and you look directly across. You actually see the arch that mm-hmm. would have led to the tunnels. Sure, sure. It feels like a dungeon. It does feel like a dungeon. Uh, yes. And, and if, it, if if it, you're looking for a dungeon location to shoot, right? <laughs> it's it works, you know. Yeah, but. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting uh, location to visit. It's very haunted in its own unique way. Mm, yes, uh, very. But I wouldn't say it's the most haunted location in Savannah. No, um, it does get that, though. It does. A lot of people do say that. And it is it is probably one of the most investigated spots in Savannah, believe it or not. It, yeah, they have episodes it, all over it, the yeah, place. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I don't think there is a single traveling ghost show that yeah. hasn't spent time in moon river so they acknowledge it oh absolutely. unlike the marshall house they acknowledge yes it. Yeah. right right uh there's they don't have corporate there, lingering there, there, yeah. there, there are a number of locations that refuse to allow that narrative to be at the core of their uh so yeah the keogh house won't allow it the um marshall house doesn't allow it because they're owned uh, by the same people they are owned by the same people mm-hmm. the um but the, the Moon River, though, I do feel like a lot of the activity that comes from it is, you know, because it's so overly investigated at this point, it's not far-fetched to believe that people aren't dropping their own ghosts Oh, there, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? And that could add to the different elements and why, you know, maybe it's so vast in the uh, different experiences that people have. Oh, yeah. So there are people, uh, uh, an enduring ghost of Moon River is the couple. That there's a couple, a man, a man and a woman, up on the second floor. Uh, uh, well, actually, the staircase from the second floor to the third floor. A lot of people see this married couple. Uh, a lot of people believe that the third floor is a highly, a very dangerous floor to be on because the spirits are very forceful and people get pushed down the stairs and scratched. I think it's because the stairs are very uh, scary, <laughs> wobbly, and, <laughs> yeah. and 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 you could fall, you know, and hurt yourself. So a lot of people don't go up there. The ghosts will get you, but it, it, also faulty construction and, and, yeah. and very old stairs. And then, of course, the attic, which is 
a nightmare of a place to be if you, um, cause I, I've only recently gone into the attic for the first time and it was like, oh no, this is terrible. <laughs> this, <laughs> I don't want to be, and what is it like up there? So we'll start with, it is very big for an attic. You're like, wow, this is a lot of space. This would be a great loft apartment if it didn't feel like I was going to be murdered. Um, <laughs> and that is what it feels like. It feels like you're going to be murdered. Uh, and it doesn't help that. And I, in my dream of dreams, this is, because people do rent it out to film a lot. So there's a lot of uh, people who will film there in the attic right now, or, or as of a few months ago, um, there is a large brick circle full of bird bones. <laughs> it definitely looks like a ritualistic setting. Um, I think I have a picture, and uh, I, I will try to post it. Um, but it, it's so bizarre because it definitely is like... If somebody recreated this for a movie or something, why didn't they clean it up? Yeah. You know, it's so, and it's very ominous. It is very, you know, if, if, if I were to come across this in any other setting, I would say someone is doing, you know, blood magic rituals. You know, these are, these are sacrificed animals, you know, and it, yeah. it's very, it's very unnerving to see. That's horrifying. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, and I think I actually sent you a pic, the picture while Did I was you? up there. And I was like, "Did you do this? <laughs> did I do this? Yes, I was. I was did joking. You say, wait, did you? Did you really send it like via yeah. text? Oh wow, I don't remember it. Yeah. Well, wow. I mean, and I think your response was no. Yes, <laughs> no, well, I didn't do that. Well, that is so something. It's a very fair well, question because I knew that you had done a horror movie in <laughs> yeah. in Moon River. So I was, yeah. I, I was, I was, I was being a little facetious in the. Did you do this? Did yes. you do this? Because it. I cannot allow it be to be a ritualistic spot. Yeah. It's like somebody did a movie, <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, and brought like KFC up there and just left the chicken bones yes. and something. Let me see if I still have that photo. Then. Now that sounds like it could have been the Lizzie Borden um, film because I remember did they, have a they had <laughs> they had a a, scene, a very weird scene. I didn't watch it, but I remember telling um, or being told that they did like a chicken sacrifice scene. That might be it, but why well, yeah. wouldn't they clean it up? <laughs> why wouldn't they? Because Lizzie Borden people? Lizzie Borden people. Chloe Savigny. <laughs> <laughs> Call us, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us why you didn't clean why up didn't your you chicken clean up bones. Your chicken bones? <laughs> but um, that, that's the movie that I would guess just because I remember there being they something about a chicken film getting in there. killed. Yeah, they, I know they filmed in the building, so it's not but out of the it, realm. It was that very they... bizarre. And, and like I said, it was so well constructed as to suggest it was probably for a movie. A film, yeah. yeah. But so many films come through Savannah. You never know who, right. who did what and did why. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> why? 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 Chicken? Why? <laughs> why the KFC bones? <laughs> but uh, enough of the KFC. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and wrap things up. And um, I always enjoy talking about Savannah hauntings. I know you all enjoy talking about Savannah hauntings. It's kind of the reason why you came here in the first place. So uh, it's really it's a good time to be able to talk about our particular theories and um, experiences with these particular hauntings. But thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, if you don't already follow us on TikTok, you can find us under Haunted City Podcast. You can find us on Instagram under The Most Haunted City on Earth. You can join us on Patreon as a para junkie. You can also find our merch like this classic shirt that says stay spooky, y'all. Uh, you can get that on our website, the uh, hauntedcitypodcast.com. Uh, and if you're a para junkie, you get a discount and a secret shop. So lots of fun things going on, y'all. But thank you guys for listening. And my name is Madison Timmons. I'm Chris Susie. Stay spooky, y'all. <laughs>